Yo, what is up everybody? I'm Liam Paris. And I'm Tyler Wilson. Today, we're analyzing the movie Vie et Passion du Christ. Translated to English as The Life and Passion of Christ. So, The Life and Passion of Christ is a French silent film that was groundbreaking in the movie industry at the time. Originally released in 1903, there had never been anything like it before. The film was one of the first feature length films to be released at the time. So, the film was directed by Lucien Langue and Ferdinand Zeka. These guys got really rich and famous off the film and could be considered what we would call big ballers today. So the film was produced by Pathé Frey, a booming film company at the time owned by the Pathé Brothers of France. One super interesting feature about the film is how it was made. A number of scenes were made in the stencil color process, Pathéchrome. This means that film editors would manually cut into each frame one by one to color a part of the print. An example of the pathochrome is visible in this scene. Notice the yellow angel wings in Roman attire. These were drawn in frame by frame by the editors. So another super interesting fact about the film is that many of the scenes are based on illustrations by Gustave Doré. Gustave Doré was a French artist who was famous for many um, biblical illustrations. And if you look at this piece here by him, and then you look at this scene in the film, you can definitely see where the directors took some inspiration from his artwork. The title of the film, Vie et Passion du Christ, translates from French to English and means the life and passion of Christ. Note that in this context, the word passion refers to the short period before the death of Jesus Christ. One thing that I found really cool about this movie is how it transitioned from scene to scene. Nowadays in movies, the storytelling is very linear and smooth. In 1903, film editing was not what it is today. The directors decided to use intertitles. Throughout the film, there are multiple intertitle scenes to help transition from scene to scene. These intertitles help the audience understand and follow along with the plot of the film. For this next part of the video, we are going to do an in-depth analysis of our favorite clips from the film. One of my favorite clips from the film was the Jesus walking on water scene. This is one of my favorite clips from the film mainly for the fact it was kind of funny and it is interesting to think about how the French people living in 1903 would have reacted at the time. This specific scene from the film is meant to portray Matthew chapter 14 verses 22 through 36. In Matthew chapter 14 verses 22 through 36, the passage starts with Jesus asking his disciples to get into a boat and cross the Sea of Galilee while he stays behind to pray. Later that night, the boat was battered by strong winds and waves, causing the disciples to become frightened. In the early morning, Jesus walked on the water towards the boat, and when the disciples saw him, they froze up, thinking he was a ghost. Jesus reassured them, saying, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Okay, so the scene I wanted to focus on included the wise men. <laughs> yeah, so basically the guys wake up and they look in the sky and there's angels and the North Star and there's all this stuff going on and they realize, oh, something must be going on. So <laughs> they end up following the North Star all the way to Bethlehem, where they find baby Jesus in the manger. So this scene in the movie is meant to portray Matthew chapter 2 verses 9 through 12. So basically, in these verses, 
um, the wise men go to Bethlehem in search of baby Jesus. They followed the North Star that led them to the place where the child was, and upon arriving, they presented the child with gifts of gold, frankincense, myrrha, and then departed to their own country by a different route, having been warned in a dream not to return to King Herod and, re and reveal the whereabouts of the child. I thought this last part was super funny just because of how Mary was holding baby Jesus. She was holding him around like he was Simba. For my second scene from the film, I chose The Last Supper. This is because of its significance towards the four gospels and its significance towards Christianity. This scene is based off of Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper. The Last Supper is a significant event described in the Bible which marks the final meal Jesus shared with his disciples before his crucifixion. The event is recorded in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, making it very relevant for our class and it is also known as the Holy Communion. During the Last Supper, Jesus shared bread and wine with his disciples and told them that the bread represented his body, which would be broken for them, and the wine represented his blood, which would be shed for them. Jesus also predicted that one of his disciples would betray him and that he would be crucified. The Last Supper is a powerful reminder of Jesus' sacrifice and love for humanity and is often depicted in art and depicted in Christian culture as a central event in the life of Christ. So another scene that I wanted to talk about was called The Crowning with Thorns. I just wanted to include the scene because I felt like it was a very important moment in the story. So this scene begins right after Pontius Pilate has decided that Jesus should be executed. So after Pontius Pilate decided that Jesus should be executed, the Roman soldiers took Jesus into the governor's headquarters where they stripped him. Um, they twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and gave him a reed to hold as a scepter. They mocked him saying, Hail the king of the Jews and spat on him. They also struck him on the head with the reed and took the robe off, putting his clothes back on him. Finally, they led him away to be crucified. This scene was definitely based off of Matthew chapter 27 verses 22 through 31. So to start wrapping things up, I want to talk a little bit about the cultural impact of the life and passion of Christ. So looking back at it today, it's considered one of the earliest and most significant depictions of Jesus Christ on the screen. And the cultural impact of the film was significant. It marked the beginning of a new era of cinema. It was also highly influential in the development of narrative film using a chronological and continuous narrative structure. Portrayal of the life and death of Jesus Christ using innovative techniques that were ahead of its time. Through its use of visual storytelling, this film managed to convey a timeless message of love, sacrifice, and redemption that resonates with audiences even today. This film's enduring legacy has inspired countless filmmakers and artists to create their own interpretations of the life of Jesus, making it a true masterpiece of early cinema. Just kidding! <laughs> Thank you for watching, and uh, see you later.